last of the series of psalm 23 i know we had 10 sundays that we uh, went through this psalm and um, today i will close with the last uh, phrase that the uh, psalmist david uh, saying that i will dwell in the house of the lord forever so he closes the psalm with a perspective on his eternity and that is one thing that we see in many of his psalms to dwell in the house of the lord is a uh, desire that he always expresses in his uh, psalm so what is the meaning of that dwelling in the house of the lord mean a lot of time when we say or hear the house of the lord we think about the church or the temple or the building where we gather together to worship god but it is a little bit more than that when david is talking about i will dwell in the house of the lord because at that time when he was writing the psalm there was no temple the temple was destroyed years before uh, that and and david wanted to build a temple for god and uh, if you look at the history god did not allow david to build the temple amen and uh, god wanted solomon to build the temple and david did all the preparation to build the temple so they didn't have a temple as we think when he says the house of the lord and the house of the lord that he had worshiped or the temple he had worshiped was wherever he was sometimes in the wilderness with the sheep or sometimes he was in the palace wherever he was it was the place to worship mm-hmm. so when we say that the house of the lord it doesn't mean that the four walls of the church or a temple a beautifully adorned windows and all that he did not have that he was worshiping probably in sometimes when he was running for his life from his enemies he was in the caves and he was in the wilderness and the jungles so the sky was his roof and the 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 um, uh, the horizon was his walls pretty much so wherever we worship god becomes the dwelling place of god wherever my people gather one or two gather in my name there will i be as far his promises So even if we are only few people here today we believe and we know that our God is present here in our midst Lord Jesus Christ so we believe in the presence of God where his children are it can wherever we are in our work in our driving in our kitchen wherever we are God's presence is always there and that's what one meaning of that is i will dwell in the house of the lord forever and also it means that it is about a perspective to eternity that my presence uh, my life in this world in the presence of god does not end with the death in this world it goes beyond the death 
uh, and the life in this world and it goes to eternity because we will be living in the presence of the Lord forever. So that has an eternal perspective also. So where is God? When somebody asks, where, where is God? God is with me and with each one of you, wherever you are in our situations of life every day. So uh, there might be a moment, sometimes we feel like God is not with us because we went go through some of the bad times, we say, where is God? Right? But believe me, God is always there in the midst of our situations, wherever we are. We honestly seek God and his presence is with us. I don't know if I store, told you a uh, story that the God is lost many times in many places. There, uh, uh, there was a mother who was raising two children and uh, they were a little uh, troublesome children and uh, she, they were driving her really mad and crazy. So she talked to her neighbor one Sunday, uh, one day and asked her, you know, this is my problem with my children. I don't know what to do. So the neighbor told him that I took my son to the priest, who is a new priest now coming, came to that church, local church. And he got him straightened up. So why don't you take your children to the priest? So she decided to take her boys to the, to the new priest. And uh, when the priest met with them, he, without um, in, uh, much of introduction, the priest uh, stared and, look, and looked at the eyes of the two boys. And he took both uh, one of them into the office and started asking, where is God? And the boy was speechless. He didn't, he didn't know what he was being asked. And the priest spoke again, where is God? And he, was, he had no clue what to answer him. And, and the priest was getting really mad. And he looked at the uh, corners of the room and under the table and everywhere. He could not find God. So he, the priest became louder again and said, Tommy, do you know where God is? He immediately jumped up and ran outside and grabbed his brother who was outside with his mom and said, um, let's get out of here. They have lost God and they are trying to pin it on us. <laughs> A lot of times we are trying to look for God in the wrong places. And um, we can find him because we are looking at him for the wrong places. But... In our hearts, in our lives, in our, in our breath, God's presence is always there with us. I always like the phrase that he is close as the breath. Because every time we breathe, it is the breath of God that comes out of us. You know that? Because God breathed life into Adam. Remember that story? So ever since that, the, breath, the, the air that we come out of our lungs is God's breath. Because that's the life breath of God. And no matter where you are or what kind of situations you are going through, as long as you breathe, God is there with you. Even after that, God will be there with you in eternity. So this psalm is a so beautiful psalm that he walks me beside still waters. He leads me in the path of righteousness. And even when I walk through the valley of shadow of death, he will be there with me. And even after that, I will be dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. An eternal hope. Eternal hope. So do, we don't have to worry about death anymore. Because God is there with us even in the, in the valley of shadow of death when we pass through that uh, valley. And, and like I said, God does not reside in a building somewhere or God resides in the spirit of every born again Christian. Every, every Christian, God's presence is with them. And coming to church does not make us a Christian either. Sometimes we think that you know, we can be in the church and we feel that we cannot. Because the, it depends on our heart condition, right? Yes. A lot of times people think that um, being a preacher, you're always dealing with godly people. <laughs> not really. <laughs> you know, you have a lot of different people that you deal with. Yes. It is not an easy job sometimes. But at the same time, it is a very, very uh, rewarding job because it's God's work. You know, so that is, that's what the shepherd's job is. You have many different types of sheep that you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So living, you know, sometimes somebody told me that living in a garage does not make you a car, Amen. right? Because, you know, being in a church does not make you a Christian. Amen. In order to be a Christian, you have to feel the presence of God in your heart. It doesn't matter if you're in a church or in a, in a warehouse, in, a, in, a, in wherever you are. It doesn't matter. As long as your heart is straight with God and God is there with you, you can experience the presence of God. So the, the, the whole uh, psalm 
He takes us from the shepherd as the caretaker for all his needs, who takes, us, who takes him to the uh, green pastures and still waters, and even through the valley of shadow of death he will be there. And when we also read that you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So as a shepherd, he becomes a host who prepares a table. Now he becomes the eternal God who will be there in eternity with us. What a blessed psalm that is. It covers everything in six verses. So the, the, the perspective on eternity as we live here is to always fill our hearts. We should not be discouraged because we have a living hope that God has given us that after death there is a life that we are going to be spending uh, with God in eternity. So the Psalms of David are filled with a longing to be in God's presence within his house. Even though they did not have a temple, David always longed to be in the presence of God, regardless of where they are, if they had a temple or not. Uh, in Psalm 27, uh, one of the Psalms that David wrote, he read that, One thing have I asked of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to look upon the beauty of the Lord and be in his temple. That was his earnest desire while he was living. It is not just a future of a uh, hope of a building or temple. It is a life here and now. As we live our life, we can live our life in the presence of God. Um, in Psalm 26, we also, he also writes that, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. And many, many other Psalms that he wrote, that blessed are those who dwell in the house, O Lord, according to Psalm 84, which was written by the sons of Korah. And, and in that Psalm, we read that one day spent worshipping in God's house is better than a thousand days elsewhere. So we all know that, how the experience of being in God's presence. So such longing for God in the house of God is the conclusion of this psalm. Uh, first, God's house is portrayed as the journey of sheep and the shepherd, like I told you. And then the hope of the eternal dwelling that ends the psalm. He sings about the presence of God in the valley of death. The good news of our faith is that God says that God loves you. And he will be with us regardless of where we are in our life situations. Um, when we go through difficult times, always remember the promises of God. He has given us the scripture to be our support. And in Jeremiah 29, we read that, I know the plans I have for you, plans for good, and to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And there is always a future for God's people who experience the presence of God in their lives. The second thing that uh, David is bringing up here is that God's house is the eternal home that God's people look forward to. And the Bible is the only book that gives a hope after death. If you read many, many other books, there is no real eternity or the perspective of eternity. Many of them teach you about regeneration and a second life here in this world. But our soul is eternal. And it will be joining God while, uh, when we are uh, taken away from this world. So the day is coming when Jesus will take us to him, with him in the place that he has prepared for us. In Second Corinthians, as we read today uh, in our scripture reading, For we know that our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heavens. Yes. So, as, so this is our earthly body. That we are dwelling here in. And this will all pass away. Because this was taken out of dirt. And we will go back to the dirt. And one day we will be taken from this earthly dwelling. So that our soul will be resting in God with, eternally. So while preaching on Psalm 23. Charles Spurgeon the great preacher said. While I am here I will be a child with my God. And the whole world will be his house to me. And when I, am, when I ascend into the upper chamber, I shall not change my company, for even I would not change the house. I shall only go to dwell in the upper story of the house that God has built for me. So this is the lower story that we are living in our earthly dwelling. And there's an upper story that God is building for us. Then when we leave this earthly dwelling, 
will have our eternal body that God will give us. So we will be living with God in eternity. And Jesus said, I am coming back. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You know, I will come back and join and take you to the place where I am preparing for you. And he is preparing a place for us wherever he is. He will take us there. And that is our great, uh, our great hope. If you all um, know about Alice in Wonderland, the little book that was uh, a classic that you all probably have read at one point. Uh, in that book, um, Alice asked the cat, uh, Cheshire the cat, the Alice asked the question, which way do I want to go? Would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? He's, she's asking the cat. And then the cat replies, that depends on a good deal on where you want to go. And uh, the cat said, um, so it depends on a good deal on where you want to go to, said the cat. Then Alice says, I don't much care where. Then the cat says, then it doesn't matter which way you go. If it doesn't matter where you want to go, it doesn't matter which way you go. But we know where we are going. And we have a destination. And we are sure of that. So don't be, don't be doubtful about our, our the hope. It is a certainty. It is a certainty that we are going to be going because there is somebody who has gone before us. Jesus Christ who is waiting for us to take us there. So let us be certain. When we say about hope, sometimes we get confused. We say that hope tomorrow is going to be a good day. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not, it's hope it turns out to be a good day tomorrow. That's a hope, an optimistic expectation. But the certainty of expectation is saying that tomorrow is Monday. That's not going to change, right? Mm -hmm. So when you say that hope, we don't say to hope tomorrow is Monday, right? It is going to be Monday tomorrow. We are going to be in eternity with God. There is no question. Let us have that assurance as we go from this place. Let us be assured of the fact that our eternal God is waiting for us to get there. Yes. So as the people who have gone before us, we will be seeing them and enjoying our lives with them once we get there. So let us be filled with the hope that God has given us through the power of resurrection of Jesus Christ in this world. Jesus said, I am the gate of the sheep. All who have come before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through, through me. Um, I read a little story. This was uh, in 1985. Anthony Ray uh, was charged with a murder that he did not commit. And he was sentenced to uh, death row. Uh, and then he was spending his life there. And during the trial, Ray forgave those who lied about him, adding that he still had joy despite of the injustice that is being done to him. And he knew in his heart that he was innocent and he did not do that trial. And he said, after my death, I know I will be going to heaven. So he had an assurance of that hope in his life. And um, whenever people ask him, you know, the cellmates ask him, what, what is your plan? I don't have a plan. I'm on a death row. But I know my God has a plan for me to receive me when I get there. And he will always ask them back, where are you going? That was his answer. Anyway, finally, um, 25, race conviction was overturned because some lawyers got interest in his case and they appealed his case and the U.S. Supreme Court turned his, uh, uh, down his uh, death sentence and he was let free because um, he was an innocent. Um, he was on death row for nearly 30 years. His, his life is a testament to the reality of God. And um, he said that he had joy when he was on the death row. Even when he could hear uh, the, the preparation that we're doing for the fellow prisoners, for taking them to the death row, he would witness that. But that did not scare him. Because in his heart, he knew that there was a hope that he will be joining his God eternity. And the joy that I have, he said after his release, the joy that I have, they couldn't ever take that away from me. That's the joy that we have. 
no situation, life or death, or sickness or suffering, and like Paul says, that could not you know, separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So let us go, go from this place filled with that hope, the power of that hope, that we will be assured of a future after death in this world. In the name of the Father. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when troubling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon His beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory.